Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Good morning. <laughs> of course, I'm on here with dreams. Um, I have two dreams that I'm going to share with you guys this morning that go together. I had both of these dreams last night. Um, I have so many dreams to get to for you guys. I'm just letting God lead in this, guys. I still have dreams from yesterday that I didn't release and the other day. Like, I'm just letting him lead. Um, but these two that I had this morning, 329, March 29th, they go together. Um, and, uh, oh, welcome, new subscribers. Um, if you don't know, um, the Lord uses me as his vessel, as a prophetic voice to his children. Um, he speaks to me through dreams, numbers, visions. I hear his voice, but his primary method of speaking to me is through dreams. And I always tell people that, um, of course, my face is itching. Um, my face itches when the Holy Spirit is upon me and I'm getting ready to do a word and I jump on camera, my face will start itching. For those of you that are new and don't know that, if you've been rocking with me for a while, you know that I, I scratch my face throughout all videos. My face does not itch until I get on here to release a word to you guys. So Holy Spirit will flow and you'll see me doing all of this and rubbing my face. There's nothing in my nose, guys. I just, um, yeah, when the Holy Spirit is upon me and I'm releasing a word to his children, I could feel it. Uh, it's, it's similar to some people who um, minister to others and they say they start sweating or they get really hot, like they can feel the fire of Jesus in them. I start itching. So you'll see me scratch my face, my nose in almost every single video because it happens as soon as I press play. And that is not a lie. You can take that to God. He'll confirm. Okay. Um, but yeah, primary method that God uses um, to speak to me through is dreams. And they are usually parable dreams. So they are not easy dreams. I have to really seek him and let him break them down. Um, and then I release them to you guys according to uh, what he gives me. Um, so just an FYI on that for those of you that don't know that. Um, but welcome. If you're new, if you, this is your second video or first time seeing me, uh, you're seeing it for a reason. Um, but again, um, I always say, I don't know why I say again a lot. I don't know. Maybe because I repeat myself in multiple videos with certain things. But I repeat what God needs me to repeat to you guys. And that's take every prophetic word back to God. Even if you know it's for him, still take it to him because he can give you a deeper um, revelation of what he's trying to say. We only prophesy in part. Do not worship or idolize a prophetic voice um, because that brings destruction upon you in your own life. Okay, God does not. Mm -mm, he's a jealous God. So take everything back to him. Um, and again, even if it's for you, uh, just let him reveal to you more of what he's trying to say pertaining to your specific situation. Um but yeah, I'm going to release these two dreams to you guys uh, this morning. I'm sure I'll be back on here today because I have um, quite a few. And I'm looking down, guys, because I have my dreams written. I also have my Bible. Um, and follow along if you can, because I will call out the scriptures as I'm getting ready to read them. Actually, let me give you guys the scriptures that I'm going to read beforehand. So I'm going to read from the NIV Bible, NIV version. And the scriptures that go with these dreams that I'm giving you guys is going to be Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. And then I'm also going to be reading Matthew chapter 12, verses 25 through 28. For those of you that like to read it on your own, and I recommend that to everybody, read along with me. Also read during your own time because that is your personal time with God. That's you sitting at his feet, reading his scripture and letting him download to you what he wants you to know, what he wants you to do in this season and so forth. So those are the scriptures that we're going to be reading from um, for those of you that like to follow and I recommend you do that. Don't just take my word or anyone else's word um, about what the Bible says. Read it for yourself. And God will sometimes even give you further revelation on what those scriptures mean. Because I've read scriptures that I've read my whole life. But when I read them and sit at the feet of God, like he gives me a deeper revelation. So my revelation may not match another person's revelation, but it falls under the same area. Like his word will never contradict what it says, but he can teach you deeper than what it says. Okay. Cause God is not literal in all of these scriptures. Like it, it's beyond that. But anyways, let me get into the dream. 
Um, the overall gist of the dream that I'm about to release to you guys, God is saying that a lot of you are getting ready to be called higher. Your, your calling is getting ready to be elevated. Many of you are already in some form of ministry, whether it's um, a prophetic voice, a ministry at church, um, your own ministry. Some are pastors. Whatever your ministry is, God is getting ready to call so many of you higher who this is for. You'll know it's for you because this is just confirmation. This is not your first time hearing this. Um, and if it is your first time hearing it, God is speaking to you through this message. You can hear what he's saying, but take it to God. But he's calling many of you guys higher. So what you're doing right now in your walk with him and in your purpose is not what you're about to be doing um, in the coming days, weeks, or months, okay? Um, things are uh, shifting swiftly, and he's elevating very many of you, and a lot of you are getting ready to separate from your family, okay? Um, you're getting ready to distance yourselves from them. He's sending you somewhere, and where he's sending you, it's to elevate you. So let him lead, even if it seems scary to you, let God lead, because many of you, he's getting ready to separate from your family, um, because you guys are not on the same page when it comes to the word of God. You're walking in ministry and to purpose. They're doing their own thing. They pray when something bad happens or when they get scared or whatever, but you guys are walking on um, two different grounds, okay? <laughs> and the only ground that's stable is rock, okay? The rock is the word of God. You've been walking on the rock, okay? They are walking on sand, okay? So when you build a house on sand, it will fall. When you build on the rock, it is sturdy. It says that in scripture, okay? Um, and that's paraphrasing, but that is what it says in his word. Um, so again, many of you are getting ready to separate in this season. Uh, do not be afraid. Take it for what it is, but God is elevating you spiritually. So I'm going to get into these dreams that is the gist of what these dreams are going to tell you, but it's going to give you a deeper revelation. Um, don't let this dream scare you <laughs> for those of you um, that are easily, um, you're easy to scare when it comes to prophetic words, um, but it's nothing scary. It's nothing scary at all, but I'm going to get into it. So in the first dream, I was in a high school. I was in a high school and there was this function going on, right? I remember there being several celebrities at this dream. Um, I'm walking around, um, communicating with everybody. I'm fellowshipping with different people. I'm literally busy. I'm kind of all over the place, right? Um, at this high school, I see my, my sister Tara, my sister Crystal, I know that my mom is there. I know that my family's there, like my, my brothers and sisters, my mom. I know that they're in the building as well. But again, I'm all over the place um, communicating with different people, networking. I'm busy. So I could see them, them there, right? And I remember looking to my, looking behind me and I see my old friend Natalia walk through the door. And I remember thinking, wow, Natalia's here. I'm like, okay. So I keep networking, right? And I see my sister sitting in a chair and she's getting an ultrasound done by Ellen DeGeneres, okay? She's getting an ultrasound done. I see my sister Tara standing next to her and I know my mom is also over there too. She's getting an ultrasound done. So Ellen DeGeneres, she's an actress, you got not an actress, but she, um, she owns a, she's like a talk show host or whatever, but Ellen dibbles and dabbles, but Ellen DeGeneres has a talk show for those of you that don't know who Ellen DeGeneres generous is. Okay. Um, but Ellen's doing her ultrasound. I see my sister Tara and my mom standing around her and Ellen's doing the ultrasound, looking at the baby and she tells my sister she sees a whole bunch of depression inside of her womb. Like she, she, she tells my sister that she, she feels that my sister's, she knows my sister's depressed. And she's like, there's so much depression in your womb. She's like, uh, I see the baby, but I see depression in your womb too. So she tells my sister, you're going to have to go to the, to the hospital, to the ER, to see a specialist to get further, you know, explanation um, and seek medical attention for this or whatever. So my sister gets up um, to go to the emergency room. My sister Tara follows. And I remember them telling me, like, 
Crystal's getting ready to go to the ER. Like uh, she she has to find out what's wrong. There's, you know, she's depressed. There's depression in her womb. Um, and they're trying to get me to come with them. But I'm so busy networking and doing stuff. I don't go with them. I let them leave and go by themselves. So as I'm there still at this event that's at the high school, I remember sitting on a couch or a sofa at this event. And I can see, I get a vision. The Lord gives me a vision as I'm in this dream sitting on the couch. And that happens to me quite often, guys. But I get this vision and I can see uh, my sister's womb and I can see uh, the baby being taken out of her womb. And then I could just see an empty womb in the vision, right? So I knew that my sister had just lost her baby, that uh, she went to the ER, they had taken her baby. And then somehow I end up talking to my sister Tara, my face is itching. (laughs) Somehow I end up talking to my sister Tara and my sister Tara is telling me the same thing. She's like, she lost her baby, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like she's telling me what happened. But I had already saw it in a vision because God had given me a vision about it, right? So that was the end of that dream. So I'm going to break this dream down to you guys before I start the second dream and its interpretation, okay? So I was in a high school, guys. A high school represent can represent many things, but I'm going to tell you guys what it represented in this dream. It represented spiritual training, a place of higher learning, okay? So being lifted and elevated in the spiritual realm, having an increase in spiritual gifts, Okay. And there were celebrities and different people at this event, okay? That represents being around people in high places. Again, elevation, favor, okay? And I turn around as I'm at this event and I see my friend Natalia, okay? Natalia's name means Christmas, okay? Christmas is a celebration. It's, it's, it represents celebration and gifts, okay? Gifts, blessings, okay? What the Lord is saying by this part, um, again, many of you are being put in high places. You're being elevated in the spiritual realm. Your gifts are increasing. Discernment, your prophetic gifts, your gifts are increasing, okay? You're being elevated, all right? And you're going to be put in a place, oh gosh, my face is itching so bad. You're going to be put in a place with high people, okay? People that... um, can give you things that a, a person in low places couldn't give you, okay? He's putting you around people that are a, that, are, that are going to be able to elevate you, okay? To elevate you, whether it's financially, whatever the case may be, he's elevating you. You're being lifted. Your calling is, is being increased, okay? And you're getting ready to be blessed. You're going into a time of celebration. Again, I turned around and Natalia is my friend in real life. I haven't talked to her in very long, but she used to be one of my best friends. And I see her. Her name, again, means Christmas. And the Lord is saying by this part that for many of you, it is a time of celebration. Again, you're walking into your harvest, your season of gifts, of blessings, okay? Now, at this event, I tell you guys that I was busy. I was talking to everybody, okay? You're getting ready to be in a busy season, okay? You're not going to have time to mingle with family and to to be at all the family functions and to be there when everybody needs you. That's not going to be your portion. You are getting ready to walk into a busy season. So if you're in a season right now where, of course, you're walking into purpose and ministry, like myself, I, I coach, I have my YouTube ministry, I work full time. So I have like a schedule, like I'm at a set pace, but that is not how it's about to stay. So enjoy this time where you are because swiftly and quickly, God is getting ready to elevate you and move you to a different spiritual realm. Um, He's getting ready to increase your gifts and you are going to be in a higher level, a position of some kind of authority, um, but he's getting ready to increase your spiritual gifts. So enjoy this time because uh, this will not be your portion for long, okay? It's, it's happening and it's happening quickly and swiftly, okay? Now, I look and I I know my family's there, but again, don't have time to interact with them. I see Ellen giving my sister an ultrasound, and she tells my sister she sees the baby, but there's depression in her womb, so she needs to go to the ER, um, to the hospital, and see a specialist to, to get assistance, further opinion, and so forth, okay? God is so strategic. The name Ellen means light, okay? Ellen represented Jesus. Jesus is the light, right? He's the light. He he is the light, okay? So Ellen represented Jesus. And 
by this part, the Lord is saying that what some of your family members are carrying um, is darkness, right? Depression is a form of darkness. If you look up the definition of depression, it's the constant feeling of sadness, loss of interest, which stops a person from doing normal activities. Depression equals darkness, okay? So what Jesus is saying is that a lot of your family members, and God uses crystal often in my dreams, and I say this a lot when he's trying to make something crystal clear to me, okay? When he's trying to get a message across. But the Lord is saying he's checked their, their heart posture, okay? Many of their hearts, it's not pure and it's not connected to him, OK, so they're in their womb. There's so many gifts and blessings because Ellen saw a baby in there. Again, Ellen is Jesus. There was a baby in her womb, but there was also depression. OK, again, depression symbolizes darkness. So there are things that Jesus is trying to birth within your family members. But because they are not properly connected to him and walking in darkness, there's an issue going on in their womb. OK, there's an issue going on in the womb and. Remember, she goes to the hospital and the the hot whoever, whatever doctor treated her at the hospital, and you can look at that as God, because in scripture, Jesus says that you cannot get through to his father as in God without going through him. Okay. Again, hence, Jesus was doing the ultrasound on my sister. She had depression in her womb. It was affecting the baby. Jesus sent her to the hospital. Okay. A hospital um, can symbolize a church, a place of healing and rebuilding. Okay. A place of care internally care for your internal. Okay. People don't go to the hospital usually because of something on the outside. Usually if there, there's a scar or they bleed or something, you can put a bandage on that yourself and it's, it's able to heal. Most people that go to the hospital, they go for an internal issue. Thank you, Holy Spirit, an internal issue that they cannot solve on their own. So they need further testing done. Okay. In this dream, Jesus sent my sisters to the hospital. What he's saying by this part is your family members need an internal healing. Okay. So many of of them, he's about to um, take them through a process of internal healing, okay? And many of them have made the choice to walk in darkness, okay? AKA depression. They made the choice to walk in darkness because your family member is familiar. Your family members are familiar about who Jesus is. They know that they can choose life or death in this world. They're not choosing life. Some of them are choosing a lukewarm life. So they're choosing to call on Jesus. My family does this often. Um, they may not go to church all the time and praise him, but when something goes wrong, they will call on him, right? They're, they're lukewarm. He's saying in your family, you have lukewarm family members, okay? He's seen their heart posture. They're not connected to him. They're connected to darkness. He wants to birth something in them, but he's they're not allowing him to because they're choosing to walk in darkness and darkness cannot operate the light cannot operate with darkness, okay? You have to choose one or the other. You cannot be a lukewarm Christian, okay? So again, he sent her to the hospital as in to his God, the, the place of to his father, God, the place of internal healing. When my sister got to the hospital, that doctor there told her um, she miscarried. So they took the baby out of her womb, okay? A lot of your family members are getting ready to have their blessing removed, okay? And they're getting ready to go through a healing process internally. What that looks like for them, that's between them and God, okay? We only prophesy in part, but they are getting ready to go through an internal cleansing process, okay? During this process, you are to stay where God is taking you, okay? When my sister left with my family to go to the hospital, I didn't go with them, but the Lord gave me a vision. I was able to see in the spirit what was going on with her. So these are people that the Lord has spoken to you about, about what's going to happen as far as your family and how he's about to intervene. You are aware of these things because you've been operating spiritually with the Lord. You've partnered with him. So he's opened your eyes to be able to see things that are going on with your family. And for a lot of you, many of you, this is not anything new that I'm relaying in this message, okay? You're getting ready to be in a place of separation from your family. It does not mean that the separation is going to be forever and that he's telling you to hate them or any of that. It's none of that. It's opposite. You are to still love them, 
but God is sending you in a separate way because you chose to partner with them and they're going to the hospital, as in to the church, to God's house, to their place of internal cleansing, okay? At the end of the day, for the Lord Jesus Christ, it's about saving souls. He doesn't come to condemn us. He comes to heal us, okay? The great physician comes to heal the sick. It says in scripture that the well don't need a doctor. Those that are healthy and well don't need a doctor. It's the sick that needs a doctor, okay? So he's showing up in their lives and he's doing an internal cleansing, do your walk your own way. Walk in the purpose and the path that God is setting for you. Do not be concerned trying to run all over and be here for this family member. Be there for them. Pray for them. Cover them. But God is telling you to walk in the purpose that he's setting before you because there's about to be a separation, okay? There's about to be a separation. So, um, yeah, if you guys look in scripture, and this is a great example, the sisters, my sisters in this dream, you can compare to Israel and Judah in the Bible, okay, which also represented sisters. Judah was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Judah did not agree with uh, Rehoboam, or however you pronounce his name, being the king of Israel. They decided to separate from Israel, right, and form their own kingdom, and God's wrath ended up coming upon Israel as well as Judah because they were both operating and doing their own thing. And they both idolized other gods. Both of them were being disobedient. So God brought his wrath on both, okay? But Judah and Israel are considered sisters, okay? And in scripture, uh, Jesus says that a nation divided against itself cannot stand, okay? A nation divided against itself cannot stand, meaning you're in the family, you're operating in your gifts, okay? You're, you're partnering with God and your family's doing the opposite thing. Y'all can't run in the same um, race, okay? Y'all can't run in the same race. That's not stable. Like a nation divided against itself, sisters. We're, we're sisters, but you're doing your own thing. I'm representing God. Of course, we're going to be divided because I'm choosing to walk in the light and they're choosing to walk in darkness. And I hope this is making sense. I hope you guys are following me. And I'm going to back this up with scripture. But a nation divided against itself cannot stand, okay? I'm building on the rock in my family because I'm choosing to walk in the ways of God. And then you have other family members that are building on sand and their house is going to fall and they're getting ready to go to a place of internal cleansing. I hope y'all are following. God is separating you guys from your family. The ones that this is for, this is not new to you. Many are like, okay, this is confirmation. God, I understand you've been saying that. I've asked for confirmation. Here's your confirmation. God is getting ready to separate, okay? Um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything, okay? And again, guys, a miscarriage is a loss of promise. It's being robbed of promise. It's also God's judgment. It's a lack of spiritual strength, okay? It's aborting the promises of God, meaning aborting, meaning terminating the promises of God. God has promises for all of his children, okay? But we all have free will. You can choose to partner with God and walk in the light and step into your promises, or you can choose to partner with Satan and walk into darkness and abort the promises that God has for you because you're not choosing him, okay? So again, with this dream, the Lord is saying there's a separation um, taking place. Many of you are being called higher. Your, again, your spiritual gifts, your spiritual gifts are increasing. Um, purpose is going to be way bigger than what you think it's going to be, okay? You're being called in a totally different direction. So do not be surprised by the shift and separation, okay? And I'm gonna read the scriptures that he gave me for this. And the first one, again, guys, is Isaiah chapter one, verses two through seven. And this is talking about um, Israel and Judah being a rebellious nation and the wrath of God, okay? It says, hear me, you heavens, listen, earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have decided to rebel against me. The ox knows its master, the donkey its owner's man manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great a broad of evil doers. Woe guys means great sorrow and distress, aka depression, okay? Darkness. Children given to corruption, 
They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured, your whole heart afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged, thank you, Lord, or soothed with olive oil. Your country is desolate. Your cities burn with fire. Your fields are being stripped by foreigners right before you, laid waste as the overthrown, I'm sorry, laid waste as when overthrown by strangers. I don't even have to explain those scriptures to you guys. Okay, again, there's a separation taking place. There's going to be an internal healing taking place with those family members that don't choose to walk on the rock as in the word of God. You keep moving in the direction that God is sending you and he is elevating you, okay? It is Christmas time. It is time for celebration and gifts for you. Everything is increasing for you. Walk. Do not feel bad that you have to leave your family members behind because God is getting ready to step in and do an internal healing with them. And trust me, you want them to go through this healing because at the end of the day, it's about saving souls and you don't want your family members to burn in the pits of hell. Okay, so let God do his thing and move out of the way. Do not try to be super saver. You cannot save them. Okay, the only thing you can do is keep covering them in prayer and keep doing as God tells you to do. God is doing an internal healing. Miscarriages are happening, okay? There's darkness that was found in the womb, okay? He saw the hearts and darkness does not mix with the light, okay? A nation divided against itself will not stand, okay? Take your nation, okay? You choose to walk with God. Take your nation and walk in the ways that he's sending you and your family members are getting ready to walk in the way that he's sending them, okay? And that's for their internal cleansing, all right? That was again, Matthew chapter one, verses two through seven. And I'm also going to read, um, I'm sorry, that was Isaiah chapter one, verses two through seven that I just read. I'm about to read Matthew chapter 12, verses 25 through 28. Okay. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. I'm going to read that again. Okay. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will not, I'm sorry, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city or households or household, okay, divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can this kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit, capital S, guys, that's the Holy Spirit, of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has came upon you, okay? Again, a kingdom, a nation divided against itself will not stand, okay? God and darkness, uh, they don't walk together. And God wins every time. He does not lose against darkness, okay? So I hope y'all are following me. That's how the Lord gave it to me for this dream. Uh, yeah, okay. That those scriptures are self-explanatory, so I'm not going to explain anything else about this dream. But again, God is taking you higher. You're being elevated. It's Christmas time for you. Okay, celebration, gifts, elevation. Keep walking in your purpose. Um, none of that down and gloom because your family members are going through it. It's okay. Let him cleanse them internally. They need it. It's about saving souls, okay? The second dream I had after this is pretty simple and to the point. Um, and by this dream... The Lord is saying that you will have the support needed um, in this transition, in this elevation, okay? He is going to divinely connect you to people if he has not already, okay? Some of you guys know who this person is. It's, it's not a big group, okay? But some of you guys know who these people or this person is that um, 
is going to transition with you, the person that's going to be your support, your spiritual sister, your spiritual brother, whoever this person is, many of you are aware of them. But if you're not, the Lord is saying by this dream that I'm getting ready to release to you that you will have the support that you need, okay? he He's getting ready to um, push you into another level, okay? Cleansing is going to be different for you. Like you're, you're getting ready to feel brand new and it could be a little bit scary, but you'll have the support that you need. So let's get into this dream. Um, so in this dream, I was at my friend Shonda's house, okay? And I was in her bathroom, standing up in the tub, and I remember her telling me that it's okay, I can shower there. She's like, many people come over here to shower. She's like, I got towels here, and she's like giving me the whole rundown. She's standing in the bathroom with me by the bathroom counter. And by the time she turns around... Um, and I think she was getting ready to hand me a towel. I had already showered. I was done. And I remember putting on my bra and putting on my shirt. And she looked at me. She's like, wow, that was fast. Like, you're already done taking a shower. Um, and I was like, yeah. And that was the end of the dream. I remember feeling clean, refreshed, and ready to take on whatever it was. Like, I, uh, it was a cleansing that I, I haven't felt before. It felt better than when you take a shower in the natural after being dirty. Like, it was a, a very clean, light feeling that I felt in this dream. And I woke up. Very self-explanatory, guys. Shonda is a sister in Christ that the Lord connected me with a couple months ago. He actually told me her name um, in a dream as well as when I woke up. I heard her name loud and clear, Shonda. I didn't know her at this time. I just knew the, that God had said her name in a dream and told me her name when I woke up. And a couple days later, Shonda in real life sent me an email to pray for her. As I'm reading her email, praying for her, guys, and I'm giving you this background for purpose. As I'm um, reading her email in the natural, uh, the Lord told me, look at the person sending you the email. So I go back and look at her name and it says uh, LaShondra at the top or LaShonda at the top. And I was like, okay, LaShonda, cool, God. I kept reading and he was like, no, go back and look again. So when I went back to look at her name, he was like, Shonda, Shonda. And I was like, oh, Shonda, the girl who, who you told me about in the dream. And when I woke up, I'm like, okay, I get it. He's like, yes. And I remember him telling me, I uh, read her email, pray for her. He gave me scriptures for her and he told me to coach her for free. Okay. And he wasn't saying she needed life coaching. He was saying to me that um, this was going to be a sister in Christ that he was sending as a divine connection for me. Okay, that I didn't know at that time, but I understood what he was saying. So I did what he said. We're still friends today. She has a, a gift of intercession like nobody's business, okay? And if you don't have friends that can intercess for you and get a blessing through to God, you in the wrong circle, okay? So I gave you guys that background for a reason so that you know who Shonda is in real life for me. But anyway, I was at Shonda's house and I was in the tub, in the shower, okay? Okay. Uh, a shower is cleansing. It, it's the Holy Spirit coming upon you, okay? A bathroom is a place of refreshing. When you're cleansed, when you're, when you're feeling fresh and clean, it's redemption. It means vindication, being cleared of blame, okay? It's a release, all right? In this dream, I had already showered. By the time she looked at me to give me a towel, I was done showering. I was feeling fresh and, and cleansed, okay? I changed my clothes. I put on a new shirt. I put on a bra and a new shirt. A change of clothes into new clothes symbolizes a change in role and authority, okay? Clean clothes symbolize conversion, separation, or preparation for something, okay? A bra symbolizes righteousness, integrity of the heart, and support, okay? This is so self-explanatory, but the Lord, again, is saying that he's sending you divine helpers, okay? The people that he's sending to divinely help you or that's probably already in your life at this moment, and many of you are going to know who the Lord is referring to about when it comes to this person, okay? But God is sending you divine connections, divine support, okay? You're not going to be in this by yourself. You don't have to feel alone where he's taking you because there will be a divine helper or divine helpers could be more than one person. Um, but for me, 
she's my divine helper. And the Lord was showing me that she is your safe haven. Like she's going to be your divine sister that when you walk into her house, you're walking into my house. You're walking into my holy temple. Okay. When you walk into your divine connections house, you're walking into the house of the Lord. You don't have to worry about witchcraft or something attacking you or something hurting you. I have divinely connected you to, to this person. Best believe that with this person being connected to them, you, you are cleansed. You are, you are made pure. Okay. But again, I put on a new shirt and a bra. Bra symbolize support. New shirt is transition. Again, the Lord is saying by this dream during your transition, he has connected you or will connect you to this person. Okay. And this person is filled with the Holy Spirit. They're filled with him. You can bet on this person when it comes to your walk. Whenever you fall short, this, this person is there to intercess. Whenever you need someone to talk to, this is going to be your divine helper, your divine friend. So don't worry about um, being alone in this transition and where he's taking you because he has divine help for you, okay? Yes, you're going to be separated from your family, but the people that are supposed to be in your life, God, it, it's already done. It's already done. And notice in this dream, Shonda said, people always come here to take showers. Uh, her house in real life, people come to her to intercess all the time. Again, they know that the Lord has his hands over her. Shonda's gift is intercession. And I'm sorry for saying your name, sis, but I had to to explain the dream. Love you, okay? Um, she watches my channel um, and I know she's gonna watch this. But her gift is intercession, okay? We all have the ability to pray and intercess on others' behalf, but some people, that is their spiritual gift, okay? So when I go to Shonda, I know she about to get a, get a uh, message up to God for me. I can do it myself, but where two or more gather, he is there, okay? Uh, Shonda is an intercessor. And if you don't have intercessors as friends, somebody that can intercede and get a prayer up on your behalf, change your crowd, okay? Ask God to remove the people that are not for you and send divine helpers in their place. Shonda is my go-to. Yes, I pray for myself, so don't come for me. I intercess for people all the time and God gets the job done, okay? But you also need somebody to intercess. I, I'm, I'm in ministry. This is a form of my ministry, YouTube, okay? So as I put out, I need someone to refill, to replenish me, okay? You have to partner with people that God divinely connects you with that can pray into you, that can speak life into you and refill you after you release, okay? Many, who is for will catch it. I'm not even going to get into that, okay? But he's sending divine help where he's taking you. So don't be afraid. Yeah, he's separating you from your family. Okay, it's for their good. They're getting an internal cleansing, okay? This is your season season of harvest. Walk into it, okay? The help is there. He's already taking care of it. So that's the end of this uh, video, guys. Yes, I'm under 40 minutes. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, all right. I love y'all. Send me your prayer request. Um, I still have slots available for coaching. I don't know how long I'm going to be coaching, guys, because the Lord has already told me by this dream and other dreams that I'll be releasing to you guys that he's switching things up for me. So use me while you can. If coaching is what you need, uh, book a console, um, invest in yourself. Uh, my clients can back it up that the Lord comes into all of our sessions, okay? Um, but Use me while you can, okay? Because God will allow you to connect with certain people for a reason. If I'm not the person for you to connect to, and I, I've said this before, choose another coach, okay? But it's okay to get guidance. Just make sure that you pray about that person. Take them to God before you accept anybody as a coach, even me, okay? But I don't know how long I'll be coaching. Um, the Lord is sending me in a different direction. And I don't know if that's going to include coaching or even YouTube. I don't know. Only God knows. We only prophesy in part. But for many of you, um, things are shifting. Things are changing. Get ready um, and don't be afraid. He, he, he has your back. Okay, it's already laid out. It was planned before you were even born in your mother's womb. Okay, before you were formed in your mother's womb. He had this, this plan ready. So don't be afraid. It's all good. But I love you guys. I'm going to get up off of here. Um, yeah, I love you guys. Have a good week. Uh, and I'm sure I'll be back on today. I don't know. Just letting him lead. But yeah, bye guys.